Hi everyone, Jonas here with 52 Things and today my plan is to help you start creating your own Lightroom presets. And why would you want to do that? Well, it significantly speeds up your editing process in Adobe Lightroom for one and second, it helps you build a signature profile as a photographer, something that people can start recognizing. And on top of that, it's also a great way for some people to start actually making some money off of their creative work, selling the presets. So the cost for this tutorial today, not much, uh, only the cost of the program, Adobe Lightroom, but there might actually be some money to be made. So I said this was my plan and it still is, uh, just a bit different than what I first had in mind. If you don't wanna hear my explanation, skip ahead about one minute and we'll get to the tutorial. Uh, right now, I am unfortunately in the parking lot outside of the emergency room at the hospital. Two weeks ago, Rob and I were shooting some video in the southern US. I got bitten by something. I don't know what it is. I thought it was a tick at first that had given me Lyme disease. And then we were thinking that maybe it was a brown recluse spider. Pretty interesting critter with a nasty bite. But then uh, no one really knows. So I'm going to go back in here, hopefully get some results today. Wish me luck. I am heading into the hospital. So while I'm in the hospital getting this looked at, I'm gonna run the tutorial. No cameras, over. With that slightly different intro and while I'm in the hospital, let's just jump into this tutorial. I have opened up Lightroom and to clarify, this is called the Lightroom classic version of Lightroom and not the app version. Since there are two versions now, this can be a bit confusing if you're looking at getting a new subscription. And I prefer using the classic version and it allows me to make these presets. First, make sure you are in the develop section of Lightroom. This is where we do all of the editing. Let's look at how the presets work and then we'll get into making our own. If you look here on the left side, uh, you see this drop down menu called presets. And when we open it, we can find all kinds of different presets that come with the program. All we have to do is put the cursor over the preset and then we can see a preview of what that photo will look like with that preset on it. Down here at the bottom, I have a folder or group with presets that I have or we have made. We do actually sell these in case you're interested and I'm putting a link in the description below. So check them out. Hopefully you like them. I took this photo on Borneo a few years ago. These men are building a boat using only simple hand tools. Can you believe it? Absolutely incredible work. I could not believe it when I saw it. I have added one of my own presets called Jakarta to this photo. This is what the photo looks like untouched without a preset and with a simple click, bam, all of the adjustments built into that preset, super simple. And you can go in and change and adjust everything if needed or any way you want it. Sweet, huh? I do want to point out that not all presets work with all photos. If I, for example, add one of my other filters called Jackson in this case to this photo, it looks kind of terrible. It's way too dark. You can't even see the face of the man. So I wouldn't use this preset on this photo. But the same filter on this photo I took of a fisherman in Ghana looks pretty sweet, I think. I love how the uh, fishing net looks here with the sun and all. And the feel or the style of the photo completely changes depending on what preset you choose. Now let's look at how we make a preset. All right, just to be clear, this won't technically be a detailed extensive tutorial on how to edit photos in Lightroom, but I will point out things that I like to change and some good things to think about. But I will speed up this process quite a lot more than I would normally do in a normal tutorial. For this, I've chosen this photo of my daughter, Evelyn. This was taken last summer. Man, I can't wait for more fun days like this with picnic on the beach. For this photo, I have an idea. I'm aiming to give it an old kind of vintage look, some faded colors and stuff. The two sliders I will not adjust for the preset are white balance and exposure. I feel that there's a risk it will just mess up the final preset since white balance and exposure are very dependent on how the photo was taken in the first place. I will make some adjustments to some of the other sliders here though. Shadows, for example, get some of that detail back from her face, it's a little dark now under that hat. And after I've done the simple adjustments up here, I'm gonna go down to the tone curve below. If you click this graph icon, you can add points to the curve for more advanced corrections. I recommend not adding more than three points, just gets messy after that. 
For this photo, I'm going for a faded, slightly washed out look on my tone curve like this. So I bring up the blacks and I'll bring down the whites and I bump up the, uh, the mid tones here a little bit like this. When I'm happy with my tone curve, I move down to the HSL sliders just below. This is where I'm going to do my biggest adjustments. HSL stands for hue, saturation and luminance. And I'm going to start with my hue. If you click the hue, you have eight different colors sliders that pop up. And as I'm going through my adjustments here, I'm just going to explain one important thing that I think is really important to keep in mind. The first three colors, red, orange, and yellow are going to affect skin tones. So be careful when you're adjusting these. Don't go too crazy unless you're planning to dramatically change how people's faces look. My biggest change for this photo will be to the blues, uh, the blue colors to achieve that old vintage kind of postcard look. I shift the blue hue towards this aqua hue instead. This is kind of what I'm going for. After the hue, I go over to luminance and do some quick changes. In simple terms, luminance means kind of the brightness of each individual color. And last, I go to saturation. Same thing, just remember red, orange, yellow affects the skin tones. Don't go overboard. In the split toning box below, we can add kind of a tint to the whole photo. And like I said, I'm going for something yellowish orange spectra so that it will look a little bit like uh, that old vintage postcard. And the last thing I'm going to do before I feel like I'm done here is to add a slight blur to the corners of the photo with a radial mask. And you can obviously continue changing and adjusting all sorts of things until you're happy with the results. But this is kind of the style I was going for here. And now I feel ready to export this preset. Super simple. Just hit the plus symbol here in the preset menu. Choose a destination. You can pick any folder you want or create a new one. Like I said before, I have created my own 52 things preset folder. So that's going to be my destination for this preset as well. You give the preset a name. This one is going to be called Jamaica because there's some good fun beach memories from there. And then you also have to pick which corrections you want to include in the preset. I keep almost everything checked except for transform changes, which I feel is something I want to do based on every individual photo. And I don't click lens corrections, which I recommend keeping out unless you know you will only use one particular lens and one particular camera for all your shots and you have no intention of sharing your preset with other people. All right, click OK and your new preset will appear in the folder you have selected. And with a quick click of a button, you can apply that preset and all those adjustments to any other photo that you have. To find the actual preset file, you know, if you want to share it or something like that, then just right click the preset name, go down to show in finder and there you have it. And that is, of course, if you're on a Mac computer like I am, but on a PC, it should be just as easy. And one last thing, I know I said this before, but after you apply a preset, it doesn't mean you can't make any changes. You can still go in and change anything in the photo that you want, even stuff that were already included in the preset. It's just that now you have a starting point and the starting point is whatever adjustments you have given the preset. So I hope you enjoyed that little simple tip that I had. Uh, it's really helpful. It will increase your editing workflow in Lightroom and also it will help you build that signature brand, the signature style of your photos, which makes, first of all, your platforms and, and your portfolio look a lot more professional and also gives you that distinct look. It's really cool. Also, Rob and I have created a little bit of a package with some of the presets that we have. The link is down in the text below. We are selling them now. Uh, so check them out. Hopefully you like them. And I also want to give a big thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the work that we do. Without your help, again, this would not be possible. So thanks a lot. Hopefully next week I won't be here in the emergency room. Uh, stay tuned for next week's video. All right, see you soon.